Okay, people. I have all these mic covers to make the sound slightly better, and I've never put them on, but I just tried putting one on, and I'm realizing the way I hold the mic, it now covers my face, like, completely. So, you know, so much for that video taking place in Redland. We're, we're doing it normal. <laughs> Jaden Animations. One of my favorite animation channels that we really haven't looked at too many times. And every week or so, I scroll by her channel, and I'm like, man... There's still essentials I haven't seen. I need to make another Jaden video. And so today, people, that's what I'm doing. We are back on Jaden's channel checking out some of the essential viewing that we have yet to watch. Videos that are essential viewing that look really exciting that I've just been waiting for a video topic for them to fit into. But I say, let's, let's just watch some Jaden. The history of my hair. Stupid lies I believed for way too long. I don't really like how I said those titles either. I'm I'm sorry, but I can't wait to watch the videos. So people, let's send it. The history of my hair. I could make a whole video on that too, honestly. The number of eras that have existed in the world of Robert IDK's hair could be written about for decades to come, but it would be the worst book of all time. So don't read that. <laughs> let's just go for it, people. Don't ask questions. Let's just watch. Homies, three, two, one, go. Hair is most often one of the most defining things someone can have to distinguish what kind of person they are. Yes. Artsy, sophisticated, yes. Asian, bald. Hey, True. did you know that you're bald? Yes, thank you. My mom is a hairdresser, True. so I've been lucky enough to never have to worry about haircuts ever. Free haircuts for life. That's the biggest positive to having a hairdresser as a parent. Unless your parent wow. doesn't give you special treatment. Well, to be fair, haircuts are the type of thing where if anyone's touching my hair, I'm going to make sure that they're not doing it for free. Because, uh, yes, while your mom is nice, having someone able to control how, what you look like and not paying them for it, they are not obligated to do <laughs> the best job. May as well cut it yourself. Free haircuts for life. That's the biggest positive to having a hairdresser as a parent. Unless your parent doesn't give you special treatment. There you go, sweetie. I love you. Oh, you're so handsome. That'll be 50 bucks. But mine does, so that sucks for you. I've never had anyone else cut my hair, and it wasn't until I moved to California that I realized I didn't trust anyone else to cut my hair. Yeah. Like I said, hair is something that makes an impact on first impressions, and if you get a bad haircut, it's pretty much expressing, Hello, nice to meet you. Yes, I do make bad decisions. Really, guys? Uh Really? I hope no one's ever thought that about me. I hope no one's ever looked at my hair and been like, oh, that guy, I can't, he, he does, there's no way he makes good decisions. Guys, have you heard of views, okay? <laughs> Yes, I do make bad decisions. I've got really dummy thick hair and a lot of it. People often give me compliments on my okay. dummy thick hair, but it's really not as great as you think it is. I'm sure there's a bunch of ways I can style it to be really cool and nice, but I was cursed with not giving a crap. So most <laughs> of the time I just try to get by without doing anything. I need a haircut that's just naturally good 99% of the time, because if it's not, then what am I going to do about it? Just feel dusty that day. That's what. That's the yin to the yeah. yang of having a hairdresser pair. Since my mom did my hair every day growing up, I never learned how to every do anything day. good with it myself. And now I'm out of the nest and at the mercy of the hair gods, armed with no skills whatsoever. So that's why I was really nervous about going to a new hairdresser at first. How is a random, highly trained professional stylist who's been doing hair for 20 years gonna know anything? My mom knows what I like. But I went to a really good place and they did a good job and I like it. It looks exactly the same and like I didn't spend more money than I should have to get it done. The style I have right now is pretty generic bangs that swoop to the side and medium length with layers. I'd also like to mention how it doesn't do the weird tufty swoops like this in real life. True. Yeah, I mean, that would, that would be kind of impossible, to be honest. Could you, <laughs> could you imagine if someone hears that and is surprised? Like, wait, the cartoon character's hair doesn't really look like that? You know, what's the most insane thing we were expected to believe was real hair? This. Are you kidding me? This was never said like, oh, this is a hat. This is a crown. This is like a native tribal uh, hat, th headdress. No, this is supposed to be hair. What? what? Right? Am I? Am, I'm not insane, right? I'm not insane, right? I'm, I'm, this is real. Why on earth did we allow this hair to just be like, yup, I guess that's what, the, what his hair looks like. I guess that's just what it looks like. Are you kidding me? It makes absolutely no 
no sense. I'd also like to mention how it doesn't do the weird tufty swoops like this in real life. I don't know how I ended up drawing myself like this. Also, literally no one can draw it and they complain to me about it when they try. So <laughs> sorry about that. But something you probably didn't know about me is that I have an undercut and you wouldn't see it because it's hidden when my hair is down. I'm super sneaky like that. I've had it for probably a year and a half now, and there were two main reasons why I wanted to get it. One, because I was getting bored with my hair and wanted to do something different. And two, because I have way too much hair on my head, and it was driving me insane. Wow. Oh my god, it just needed to go. Wow. It takes half a day to dry if I take a shower in the morning, and if any slight breeze hits it when it's damp, it'll puff up uncontrollably. Fun. You can see my hair sheds much more because they're like long, dark snakes all over the place. Wow, what? There are so many dudes in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and onwards who can't even imagine having too much hair and being like, ugh, let me just get rid of like half of this. <laughs> you will never know. You will never know that pain. Talk about a first world biological problem, you know? It's much more because they're like long, dark snakes all over the place. It looks like the girl from the ring ran back and forth down a single path in my house. They also travel like burrs in the wind. I don't know how they do it. I'm pretty impressed with them, actually. My roommate will find hairs in their room and clothes. Friends will find them in their house when I've never been there before. There's probably <laughs> a radius around my house that's just contaminated. Scientists have found that you're never more than three kilometers away from a Jaden hair. So getting an undercut, while not a complete solution to my hair problem, was helpful because now I just have less hair to lose. Wow. I'm content with the hairstyle I've got now. It's gone through a lot growing up. For most of my childhood, it was pretty long and straight. You can see that when James and I watched my childhood videos. There was one time in sixth grade where my mom accidentally cut it too short and it looked like a coconut, uh, but we're not going down that path today. Oh, I have I have been in the coconut land, let me tell you. <laughs> Robert IDK has been to coconut land. I will text my mom and I will get photos of me with coconut hair, okay? And it wasn't supposed to be no coconut. Well, actually, this one right here, this horrendous photo that is so bad that I just want the whole world to see. It. You can see the coconut right there pretty much. I did have super, super, super thick hair and I wish I did more to preserve it while I had it because now I have this like adult less thick hair and it makes me so sad. I could I could have had a lion's mane. I will never be able to have fully experience the true possibilities of that insane hair thickness that I had as a kid. But we're not going down that path today. My mom always wanted me to do fun stuff with my hair, so she'd always be like, let's do something cool with your hair. And I've been like, no, I'm fine. What? I like being average and having no attention grabbing features. But in freshman year of high school, I was like, new school, new me, let's do it. Yeah. So we put two streaks of red in my hair, which I thought was really cool. That lasted maybe half a year until I wanted to change the color of the streaks. So we went a little further and made them what? purple Whoa. into pink streaks. Then after I got bored of that, we went even further and instead of having the streaks, we made the ends wow. fade into purple into pink. I like that one a lot because you could see the color more often. Wow! This is like so the opposite of how parents treat their kid's hair when when their kid you, you know? This is like the complete opposite of how my parents thought about me experimenting with my hair. Complete opposite. When I dyed my hair for the first time, I, I just dyed it like a darker brown and it came out pretty much black. I don't know. The My hair just really caught on to the dye. My mom like barely talked to me for a week. I'm not kidding you. Ex extreme reaction? Uh, yeah, I, th I think so. Yeah, complete, complete opposite. Are you kidding me? I like that one a lot because you could see the color more often. Then in college, I changed from purple into pink into just into purple. It was more subtle, but I liked it a lot. It was probably my favorite of the color styles I had. Wow. Everything was great great about the colored hair, except not because it was annoying. If any of you have had colored hair, which I'm assuming statistically kind of. at least one of you have because it's the internet and we're quirky, then you know the hell of maintaining colored hair. Right after so. you get it done, you take a shower and all of a sudden the dye is staining the water very spooky, and the bathroom very and literally everything. Goodbye white spooky. towels, I never trusted you anyway. <gasps> you go to sleep with damp hair. Oh, Ooh. I didn't know the white pillowcase I own is actually a quarter purpley pink yeah. exactly where I put my yeah. head. After like a week or two, it starts just 
straight up looking bad. Everything's oh. faded and it looks like an ugly straw that uh, isn't a color. So you've got to go back to the salon at least every month to assure people that the ugly straw isn't a decision you made. Oh, and it actually man. does look good, I promise. <laughs> okay, yeah, guys, I don't think I will ever do like a wacky color. This is not really me. This is my version of wackiness. And if you're randomly watching this video and you aren't aware, yeah, this is not my natural hair color. Yeah. It's actually, so I don't have like dyed hair. I have got bleached hair and bleached and toned hair, but I don't have dyed hair because I we didn't put any like green, red, brown, whatever. It's literally just bleached to make it as light as possible and then a toner so that it's more like closer to white than to like yellow. But it is a bit of a pain to maintain. I've never actually got my hair like retoned or anything like that. I just like go crazy with the purple shampoo. There's a stuff, if you don't know, there's a stuff called purple shampoo that when you bleach your hair, you start using it uh, because your hair naturally, it's going to try to go into like a brassy orange type color. You don't want that. Or maybe some people do. Most people don't want that. So you get it toned to, to, to make the difference. Let's look at it right now. Hair toner before and after. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, it's kind of, it's like more yellowy and brassy and then boom, toned. This is a not a good photo, but yes, exactly. You're getting rid of the yellow and making it more like that. And so yeah, I mean, there, there's certain people who wouldn't want to do it, but for me, yeah, th this is what kind of what I was going for. <laughs> and it actually does look good, I promise. And if your hairdresser isn't your mom, then sucks for you. That's at least 200 bucks literally down yep. this purple stain drain again. Yep. I'm not here to say colored hair is bad and not worth it. I enjoyed it a lot when I had it. I'm just mentioning the law of equivalent exchange that comes with having really dope looking hair. Would I have colored hair again? Yes. Probably not. Do I regret when I did have it? No. Probably not. I had fun and got it all out of my system, and now mm. I like having my natural hair color again. Want to hear something probably gross? Yes. No, wait. Please don't yes. leave. One time when I was a kid, it was Sunday morning, and I went into my parents' room to watch cartoons on their TV. And as I got onto their bed to get <sighs> oh, comfy, no. I felt oh, something no. weird and tickly on my leg. So I looked to see what it was, and somehow one of my mom's hairs was thick enough to pierce through a shallow part of my skin and out again. What? So it was like I sewed what? my leg with one of my mom's what? hairs. It didn't really bother me. I what? just pulled it out and kept watching cartoons. But I still think about it every what? once in a while. I think my mom's Hercules. Oh my gosh. I had no idea that was physically possible. Also, she just referenced the exact Hercules scene that I was talking about like a few videos ago. My mom's Hercules. I like my hair. I wish I knew more about how to style or do stuff with it. I'm kind of intimidated by my hair because I don't want to make it look bad. So I'm content with just having it do its thing most of the time. And if it's cool. bad, it's only like 50% my fault. Luckily, I can draw it in any way I want, and you'll never know if it's messed up or not. Honestly, maybe it's a good thing that my parents were like very anti-dyeing my hair, because if they embraced it, who knows like what my hair would look like now. You know, maybe I would have gone way further with it and gone way too far, you know? And now here's something we think you'll really like. Stupid lies I believed for way too long. We just talked about in the infamous swoosh video how gullible little kids are. How if you rub speed stick deodorant on your arm, it can make you go fast. And I think all of us at some point in our lives have done something highly embarrassing because we were told something stupid and we believed it. Let's see what Jaden's are like. Stupid lies I believed for way too long. Three, two, one. Go. Well, would you look at that? The first video I'm posting in 2017. In a yeah, year, we can look back at enough. this video and say, we had no idea what we had coming. So another year has passed, which means we're all one year older, which means we're growing as people. Which exactly. 2017. Feels so good to be making this video in 2017 right now. I'm right there with you, Jaden. As a youngster, I was prone to believing people pretty much unconditionally, as with most children. I just had too much trust for my own good. Like, oh, why would anyone have yep. any reason to lie to me? The world is full of nothing but nice people and purity. Of course, I've grown out of that 
mentality and am a lot more cautious. But for a while, people could just tell me things and I just believe them. Yep. I got thinking about all the ridiculous things people put in my head that I stored as facts, and I decided to make a list of the craziest ones. And also, just letting you know, I was like younger than seven in all of these stories. Don't worry, I didn't just find out these things aren't true like okay. a couple months ago or anything. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, that clears that up. I didn't know. Being gullible as a little child. I already have several stories in my mind from when I was a kid. N when you're a kid, not only are you more likely to just believe lies that are told to you, but you are also more likely to just tell yeah. lies. Like, just make stuff up. Like, me and the homies, like, when you're little kids, you'll just make something up and tell it to people. And they just believe you because they're your friend. And it's like, why did I just make that up? Like, I remember... Oh, no, I gotta save it. I gotta save it. I gotta save it. I'll remember. When I was in first grade, for some reason, my mom told me aluminum foil is poison, and if I ever bit it, I'd die. What? A bit strange, but I think I know the idea behind it. Apparently, biting foil can induce a galvanic shock. Basically, what? if the foil comes in contact with braces, metal fillings, something like that, the metals will react with each other and create a little electric shock. But all I knew as a kid was teeth, contact with aluminum foil, Death. Yeah. And I was petrified. I didn't even have braces or anything metal in my mouth at the time, so nothing would have even happened if I tried it. I also remember going to school the next day and telling my friend, Did you know that if you bite aluminum foil, you'll die? Exactly! Exactly, you spread the misinformation. Forget about modern media. Children are the biggest source of misinformation in this world. If they hear a lie, they'll just say it to someone else. Or they'll just change someone else's lie to make an even weirder lie. And that's how it goes. And she goes, I think I've bit foil before. And I was like, how are you not dead? Grasshoppers spit acid in your shoes. Ah! This one probably needs explaining too. I was at recess with some friends and we were running around in the grass without our shoes on. When we went back to put them on, there was a little grasshopper sitting at the bottom of Spooky. my right shoe. Guys, look, a cute little grasshopper is wearing my shoe. Ah! And one of my friends goes, Oh my god, grasshoppers spit acid! Get it out! And then we all start panicking spit at the acid. fact there was a death grasshopper in my shoe. I looked up why she could have thought that, and it actually is a fact that grasshoppers can spit a brown liquid to protect themselves from predators. Whoa. It's called tobacco juice, and what? even though it's slightly acidic, the worst it really can do is stain your clothes. It's pretty much harmless. Wow, I'm learning so much! In this video about lies, Jaden has literally taught me two things. The, the braces foil thing and the grasshopper juice thing. I, I'm literally learning things that I never knew before. Amazing. Pretty much harmless. But oh, dude, no. I had the image in my head of some breaking bad hydrofluoric acid oh, dissolved no. through everything it touches. Oh kind of my also, gosh, terrifying. Speaking of staining clothes, I was at lunch one day with the rest of my class and one boy took out a bag of pomegranate seeds his mom packed for him in his lunch. A lot of us hadn't seen them before because it's a bit of an exotic fruit, so it caught some attention and we were all asking a bunch of questions about them. The boy said, Did you know pomegranate seeds can stain your clothes and it'll never come out? Never <gasps> come out. Oh, it's like Mr. Krabs' paint! <laughs> SpongeBob and Patrick hear that and just the post-traumatic stress that they go through. It Listen, if you ain't if you if you ain't know what I'm talking about, you missing out on a classic, okay? To the people who got it, you're welcome for another fire SpongeBob reference from your boy. <laughs> and it'll never come out. <gasps> Whoa. That must be one powerful fruit. Whoa. It never comes out. Never, ever, forever. Never. Not even with the power of OxyClean Laundry Ooh. Stain Remover. It gets the tough stains out. And then Woo. we watched the kid eat a bag of pomegranate seeds sitting sideways with the seeds on the space next to him because he didn't want to spill them on himself. Looking back, it was definitely just his mom exaggerating because she didn't want to have to deal with the stains and laundry. <laughs> a slight parenting yeah. trick if I do say so myself. That's it. That's what happened. That's what happened. Oh. Oh, I get it, Mr. Krabs. You told us the paint was permanent so me and Patrick would be more careful and not get paint on anything. Nah, I just like to mess with you. Absolute beefing, Mr. Krabs. Absolute beefing. It actually comes off with saliva. This paint actually comes off with saliva. Oh, before I forget, I gotta boop that like button. Boom. If you have not booped the like button yet, I would appreciate it. You know, I'm taking a moment to... You should, 
That'd, that would be, can you, do, that would be cool. Oh yeah, and also I do have a join button now. If you want occasional behind the scenes updates, I announced that I was starting my animation channel to members first. So members knew I was working on an animation channel like two weeks before everyone else. So if you want exclusive information like that, uh, yeah, you can become a member. I think it's like a couple bucks or something like that a month. But yeah, up to you. And yeah, you can also subscribe if you haven't. That would be fun too. It's weird to think she's out there somewhere and she doesn't even realize she accidentally taught me that lesson too. This one's actually kind of common to believe, and I think a lot of people have been passing this myth around for a long time. Sitting too close to the TV is bad for your eyes. I did right. research on this one as well, and even though it might seem like it could be true, there's apparently no actual evidence that sitting in front of the TV is damaging to your eyes. Wow. But oh, little old Jaden believed it, wow. and you know what I did with that information? Nothing. Stand directly in front of the oh. TV. Yeah, for some reason when I was younger, I really, really wanted glasses. I don't know where that came oh from. I just gosh. liked the look of glasses and wanted them. So when no one was looking, I would go up to the TV screen oh and stare God. at it. Like one inch away from my face. This'll get me glasses. That, yo, oh my gosh. I want to say that is completely insane, but guys, you know what I did when Harry Potter came out? I wanted glasses, so I would occasionally try to look into my reading light to damage my eyes. Insanity! Guys, if you are just a rare child out there watching this video, and you are trying to do something like that because you think glasses are cool, do not do that. Please, do not do that. If, if you permanently damage your eyes from doing something stupid, you, when you're older, will regret it so bad. No grown adults want to have bad eyesight. So please, take care of your eyes. Like one inch away from my face. This'll get me glasses. But it didn't work, obviously. I actually have really good eyesight. Maybe standing too close to the TV will improve your vision. But yeah, I'm glad my eyesight sabotage plan didn't work because having glasses just seems like a hassle and inconvenience. Tip of the hat to anyone out there with glasses or contacts or even glass eyes that are annoyed by them. Wish you the best. We people without those things forget how good we have it. This one's a bit related True. because it's about eyeballs again. If you try to use your eyes to look back into your head at your brain, uh, you'll get stuck uh, and you'll be blind uh, forever. Uh, Oh, I forgot this was a lies video. Oh, for a second, I forgot. Harry Potter book. I forgot we were looking at lies. Ah! That made me cringe so hard because I thought she was just saying a fact. Ah! I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Guys, that's one of those things that gives me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> Ah! I don't know how that looked. I'm scared. Oh, sorry, guys. If you try to use your eyes to look back into your head at your brain, they'll get stuck and you'll be blind forever. It's a bit of a spin-off of the other eyeball myth of if you cross your eyes too much, they'll get stuck like that. I never believed that one, but I believe this brain one. A friend told me once that if you try to look at the back of your head with your eyes, you might be able to see your brain. And we spent the whole day trying to do it. Then oh my gosh! Home, I asked my mom about it, and she said, don't do that. They'll get stuck. <laughs> I think I believed it so quickly because if you try, it does kind of hurt your eyes a bit because they're not- I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really, I'm really sorry, guys. This stuff just makes me so uncomfortable. What a crazy video this is. This is not what I expected. I'm going to be too late if I don't tell this story. Well, it's not much of a story, but I was talking about how kids will just make stuff up, just make up lies for no reason to tell people. Like, I just remember one time in class in like grade five or six, I would have been like 10 or 11 at this point. I'd been playing the, the video game 1080 Avalanche and there's a part in the game where you jump out of a helicopter with a snowboard. <laughs> and I thought that was super cool. So I'm like, well, hey, that sounds like a reasonable thing to tell my friends I did. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there in, in art class. I remember when it was, and I was just like, hey, Evan, did you know I um I jumped out of a helicopter on my snowboard? <laughs> and he was like, no, you didn't. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I did. Let me tell you, the rate at which I buckled. Evan says to my best friend, Tim, hey, Tim, R Robert says that he jumped out. I'm like, no, 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 I didn't. I was lying. <laughs> I didn't want the embarrassment of having multiple people gang up on me and confront me on this lie. You know, I couldn't bear it. I could not bear it to happen. Honestly, guys, we should make an animated video on my new animation channel that is coming out soon. We should make a whole video on stories I have told on this channel. Oh my gosh, we should, we should, we should. Oh my gosh. 
we we gotta do that. Please leave a comment on if you think I should do that, okay? That would be really fun. And then I'll do like a community post asking you guys for your favorite stories that I've told that should be animated. I think I believed it so quickly because if you try, it does kind of hurt your eyes a bit because they're not really supposed to be able to look back into your head like that. And I thought that was like your body saying, don't push it. Whoa, this is that a warning. scared me. And even to this day, I'm a bit nervous pushing my eyes to their rotation limit. I don't know how else to say it. I know it's not true, but it's still always in the back of my mind. No pun intended. I'll never be able to see. And finally, the most ridiculous thing I believed. So I don't know how this happened. No one told me this. I don't understand where I went wrong okay. here. But somehow I ended up confusing the disease tetanus with AIDS. I don't know how what? I did that. Back then, I didn't even know what AIDS was. And yes, okay. I am considered a PG channel for the most part. So if you're a youngster watching and you don't know what don't AIDS is... Don't worry about it. Your parents will explain it more in a few years. It's a disease that you don't need to worry about for the time being. Only adults should need to worry about it. So we yeah, get it. We I get thought it, tetanus was called AIDS. The disease that you can get from an infected cut was called AIDS to me. And the worst thing about it is this one time someone accidentally cut themselves on a rusty shovel, oh, and no. I have the memory of saying, careful, you could get AIDS. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> what, why, how did this happen to me? I don't understand what went wrong. How do I mix those two things up? But whatever, I know the difference now and that's all that matters. But I do sometimes mix up saying tetanus and Tetris. Careful, you could get Tetris. Oh my word. Listen, that's not the only AIDS lie that has been told by a kid. Honestly, that's so crazy. I was just thinking about that. That's a word that I, you just never hear anymore. When I was a kid, I felt like I heard about that illness all the time. And now I never hear, I mean, I guess that's a good thing, isn't it? Wow. AIDS, I remember it like it was yesterday. People. Thank you for coming with me on this journey. If you would like to support the original creator, here is Jaden's channel. Make sure you are subscribed. She worked so hard on these videos and deserves all the support in the world. Here is the full playlist of times we have looked at Jaden animations before. If you have not seen all these videos, check them out. You have some catching up to do. Or if you've seen them all, here's a video that YouTube thinks you will like. I'll see you here. I'll see you there. Peace.